This video is sponsored by Warframe and Digital Extremes. Meet Cyanax, the 50th and latest Warframe added to the game. Inspired by ancient warriors of the past, Steinax is a master of javelins, tearing through enemies with ease. In this video, I'll show you how to get him, what his abilities do, and how to set him up to be devastatingly good. I'm Nick Engineer, let's solve the practical problem. The Veilbreaker update for Warframe released on September 7th, so download the update right now while you're watching this video. If you do so in the first two weeks of the update, you can get Steinax for free just by logging in. Get that download going, and then let's continue. For those of you watching more than two weeks after the update, worry not. You can either purchase Steinax fully built from the market for Platinum, or you can earn him in-game through Carl's Garrison using stock. However you get him, let's see what abilities you'll have to play with. His passive is a critical chance buff to Steinax's weapons. Every 40 shields or overshields is 1% extra critical chance, or 2% for spear guns. This buff is additive with critical chance mods. Seeing as how Steinex can produce shields and overshields through his kills, this is a buff you can work towards by keeping enemies under control. To start doing just that, we have his first ability, Axios Javelin. Steinex launches a single javelin towards where he's aiming. If it strikes an enemy, they take a base 1,250 puncture damage. So long as the enemy isn't immune to crowd control, such as not having any overguard, they'll be dragged by the javelin and impaled into whatever surface the javelin hits. Usually, this would be the closest wall behind the enemy, but you can also leap over them to impale them downwards into the floor. If you do successfully impale an enemy, they'll be bound for the ability's duration, and create a short-lived vortex strongly sucking in nearby enemies. This serves as an extremely powerful crowd control ability, grouping up enemies and temporarily rendering them helpless. As a special note, the Vortex duration is unaffected by duration mods, allowing you to focus entirely on range for this. With the enemies grouped up, this leads very nicely into Steinax's second ability, Tharos Strike. Steinax summons his shield to send out a wave of energy, stripping enemy defences. The wave is cast in a wide angle in front of Steinax, as well as a tight area all around him, for the pesky unit sneaking up behind him. At base, it removes 50% of enemy shields and armour permanently. With 200% ability strength, this caps out at complete defence removal. Defence removal abilities like this one have been changed with Veilbreaker to always reduce the current amount of defences based on their maximum value. This means that two unmodded casts of Tharos Strike will fully remove all armour, Similar abilities previously only removed half and then half again, leaving 25% remaining. What's more, the new removal stacks directly with the Corrosive Projection Aura. If you're running solo with the minus 18% from Corrosive Projection, it only takes 164% power strength to fully strip enemy armour in one cast. In a nutshell, Defense Removal just got a whole lot stronger to use. These first two abilities give you a powerful combination of clustering enemies and removing all of their defences, allowing you to kill them before they can even stand up to fight. If that wasn't enough, Tharos Strike also opens enemies up for finishers briefly, heals you for each enemy affected, allowing for quick recovery, and it deals a modest amount of damage to the enemies after the defence reduction happens. And to top it off, Tharos Strike is the ability granted by Steinax to the Helmet system when consumed. Moving on to Steinax's third ability, we have Rally Point. Steinax draws enemies to focus onto him, pulling them away from his allies. In the process, both he and nearby allies gain two buffs, first granting energy over time, and second granting shields on kill or kill assist. This includes kills done by your companion or summons such as on call crew. As this is an energy generating ability, it can be a net positive even when playing solo helping to support the rest of Steinax's kit. With the amount of energy gain and shield gain tied to strength, strong builds with good duration will naturally get the most from this ability. Do be aware that allies must be within range when you cast Rally Point in order to gain its benefits, and they retain these benefits for the duration even if they move away from you. Finally then, we have Steinax's ultimate ability, 
final stand, and this one hurts. Sinax rises up into the air with his javelin. As he does so, spectral duplicates of him appear on both sides, unleashing a barrage of explosive javelins towards where Steinax is looking. The ability continues for a moment, during which Steinax can both redirect his aim and the aim of his spectral army, as well as hover around the fight to get the best advantage for his onslaught. These javelins not only deal a sizable amount of direct and explosion damage at a rapid rate, they also force slash procs from the entire ability. At base stats alone, this is potentially 105,000 damage directly and a further 220,500 damage from the slash status effects, the latter of which bypasses all armor entirely. With more strength you get higher damage, more range gives a larger explosion radius on each javelin, and more duration keeps the ability running longer, unleashing yet more javelins. So let's put this all into practice with four builds. This first build is focused almost entirely on casting. We have enhanced duration, range and strength, allowing us to use Steinax's full kit very effectively. With Corrosive Projection, we can get away with less than 200% strength for total armor strip. If you run without that, or want to do a full shield strip too, then swap out Cunning Drift for Power Drift. Natural Talent helps cast the abilities more quickly, especially Rally Point, although it doesn't increase the attack speed of Last Stand. The only defensive mod on this build is Rolling Guard, for just in case an Arson Xmas manages to catch you unaware. Altogether, this build is suitable for ability heavy play, even up into Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. However, the lack of a more robust defense means it's a bit squishy on the Steel Path. Now, to shore up those defenses for Steel Path level, we can sacrifice some casting stats. By dropping Natural Talent and Constitution, the abilities take longer to cast and don't last as long. In exchange, we get room to add in Adaptation and Prime Sure Footed. With the amount of shields that Steinax has and can build, Adaptation provides a significant amount of defense to those shield hit points, getting maximum value from them. Because Steinax has a high innate shield pool, a full shield gating approach is difficult to pull off, even if we're using a couple of Augur mods, which is why we're focusing on damage reduction instead. Still, the best defense is making use of Axios Javelin to group up and ragdoll enemies. The defensive mods are there to give you more time to react to unexpected enemies, especially preventing being knocked down at the wrong moment. And once again, this build will fully strip armor thanks to Corrosive Projection. Now these first two builds have focused on total armor removal, however we can make use of the additive nature of defense reduction for a different approach. By focusing on less strength, we can instead afford a higher range build. Here I've swapped out Prime Shore Footed for Overextended and Augur Secrets for Streamline. The net result is that we have the ability to affect enemies across a much larger area, in exchange for having to cast Tharos Strike twice for full defense removal. For many weaker units, we don't need armor reduction, so we can get away with one cast or none at all, purely working with the crowd control. This overall is a more energy intensive build, not least because Rally Point is now generating a lot less energy per cast, hence the inclusion of Streamline. You can also use Zetarix Wellspring to make up for the loss from Rally Point. I've chosen to keep Adaptation on this build, so we can still be more resilient on the Steel Path, but you can swap that out if you don't need the extra breathing room. Finally, our fourth build breaks the mold. Rather than relying on Steinax's control and shield generation for survival, we can go the entire other direction and make an armor tanking build using the Helminth ability Parasitic Armor. This disables your shields for the duration in exchange for an armor buff based on your maximum shield capacity. With Steinax's innately high shield, we can use redirection to make this a staggeringly high buff, pushing Steinax to over 3,500 armor for more than 92% damage reduction. Add on the damage resistance from Adaptation, the health buff from Vitality, and then either actively heal with Tharos Strike or passively heal with Arcane Grace, and Steinax becomes incredibly resilient. This does mean making some sacrifices compared to earlier builds. We lose some range, Rolling Guard, and Prime Shore Footed in order to accommodate the hit point mods, as well as having to give up an ability slot. I've chosen to surrender Last Stand on this build, keeping Steinax's control, debuff, heal, and energy generating abilities. The damage we're missing out on can still be achieved by our weapons. This particular build is especially powerful when combined with a teammate providing a lot of healing, such as Wisp, Oberon, or Garuda. Between these builds, you can lock down whole rooms, tear down enemy defenses, and call in a spectral javelin airstrike. 
whichever style you pick, Stylax is a solid new Warframe. And like I said, you can get him for free in the first two weeks of Veilbreaker, just by logging in. In any case, that's all from me for now though, so as always, rally up, throw javelins, and fight well Tenno.